Welcome back, everybody, to the Brighton Branch. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Today, I wanted to do something special by special request. We are going to talk about passenger trains today. We have two passenger trains that run on the Brighton Branch. One is a dedicated uh, two-way commuter, so we go from Brighton to Valley View and back. We run this train in the morning and in the evening. And then right after, about 20 minutes after this one, we have the mail train that runs every morning and evening as well. It runs from... Uh, actually, sorry, it just runs in the morning, but it runs from Brighton all the way down the Valley View and back as well. And then uh, since it only runs in the morning, of course, we don't have any nice pretty meets with the evening commuter run. But that mail train does have one combine car for carrying just a few people who may not have needed to meet uh, the through passenger train that runs in the Valley View every morning. So uh, we do have a passenger train that hits Valley View in the morning and in the evening. People get off at Valley View Station, they walk over to the platform for the Brighton Branch, and they hop on our train here, and they continue on their way. We do not have any direct interchange, uh, and, nor do we have any through passenger trains. That's not necessarily because that stuff didn't happen, because it absolutely did happen. It's mostly just because of the space constraints and limitations that we had in Valley View. So when we get there, we'll talk about that. But hope you guys are excited. We're going to do something a little different, talk about passenger trains. Uh, we still have plenty of operational value to add here, so... Uh, it's definitely not going to be a, oh, go from point A to point B kind of video. It'll be, it'll be fun. See you guys in just a second. All right, so for our run today, we're going to be running the evening passenger train. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to get him out of Brighton Station. We've been lying through the yard, and uh, then we'll head on, and we will make stops at every station along the way. So... Lots to see, lots to do. Our power today is Canadian National X-Class. To be fair, the X-Class probably didn't run in Michigan, which is the setting for the Brighton branch. But you know what? It's a layout. We're going to have fun with it anyways. We do run the mail train usually with a 10-wheeler, so here in a little bit we'll show that as well uh, if we have time. If we don't have time, I'll just have to make a separate video, which I'm sure will be great. Well, here we are arriving in Templeton. Going to make our first passenger stop after Brighton. Now that we've made our stop, we'll give the long whistle to let everybody know they can get on and get off. Go ahead and turn the bell off, or we're going to wait. If you want to simulate a fast clock, you would just sit here for a few seconds. Uh, we'll sit here for about 30 seconds or so, call it a day, or at least until I shut up. <laughs> but uh, all the content you see here, as far as the rolling stock and the locomotive, these are all from KL Trains. I would definitely recommend you check out their website, kltrains.com. Uh, I don't get paid to say that. I just love Steve Laro and all of his content. It's fantastic stuff. So I have no shame in uh, telling you guys how great his stuff is. This is an old set, so he does have some stuff that is far more detailed than what you're looking at right now. Uh, especially his newest uh, Pinsy releases are incredible. So uh, definitely go check his stuff out if you're into Steam Era Passenger and Freight. All right, now it's time to make our departure from Templeton. So we'll give it a good two whistles and off we go.
Here we are passing the co-op facility. I will be honest, the video I made on this has turned out to be the most popular video on the channel thus far. Did not expect that, but I'm definitely excited about it. Uh, thank you all for your support and for watching stuff on the channel. Please stay tuned for more good stuff coming up here in the next few weeks. And I do apologize for not getting this video out yesterday on Thursday. I do personally uh, like the whole Monday-Thursday idea. I think it's a pretty decent balance for what's going on in my life right now with uh, grad school and kids and everything. But, uh, you know, I just, just had a hard time this week. Couldn't make it. But here we are. So thanks again. And uh, go check out that video on the co-op if you haven't just yet, of course, after you finish watching this one. Here we are coming in to Hartley. We've got a station stop coming up. This will be, usually this is where we have some meets with some freight trains in the morning. Since we are currently running the evening commute, uh, we're not going to have any meets with freight trains here in Hartley because the only other train that runs here that's a freight train uh, runs later on after us. So no meets. Not this time at least. Looks like we uh, caught the wrong side of the train today as far as the sun goes. It's best to get your shots from the sunny side. Looks like it kind of messed it up a little bit. Rookie camera, man. What can we say? Gosh, got to train these rookies up right. Well, lucky for us, our cameraman found a better spot just in time for our departure. You can see to the right here, we have a Canadian National Boxcar sitting on the team track. If you go back and watch the video on the Hartley Local, you can see us in part one and two as we go through and do a lot of setouts here in Hartley. Hartley is a busy place. Lots of fun and enjoyable session we had there. I think I broke it up over a live stream and like a follow-up video. It was it was a good time. Well, here we are in my favorite area of the Brighton Branch to uh, get nice, pretty train shots. Not just because it has an S-curve, but because it's in the woods. There's some overgrowth on the track, and we have a little creek off to the side. But uh, if you have been a loyal viewer of the Brighton Branch videos, you'll notice that I've featured this scene in pretty much every one of my videos. I just really enjoy this spot on the layout. This is my spot that I like to take photos. If I was a rail fan, this would be the place. Well, this is the uh, last area here before we get to Valley View, which is where we have our station stop. So this is also where the scenery ends. I haven't quite finished it up just yet. Got the buildings in place and everything, at least have the ground cover on, but I don't have any fancier details. So it's not going to be as pretty. So bear with me. It's still going to be just fine. We're going to enjoy it. So here are the two parts to our uh, station here at Valley View. You can kind of, I guess, assume or consider this as being... As if we had two separate railroads that initially owned these two facilities and then they merged and just haven't quite yet facilitated the uh, creation of one single depot to serve all interests. So this is why I say, you know, people get off at one depot and kind of walk over to the other to get ready for the next train. So we'll just assume that that's what's going on. Some creative license. But uh, here we are with our final arrival for the day at Valley View.
Well, once we make our arrival here at Valley View, the way this works, we go ahead and let everybody get on and off. We have, uh, to quote one of my favorite movies about the Civil War, The Great Locomotive Chase from Disney, we've got uh, Rival with 20 minutes for breakfast. Although, of course, this is evening, so we'll call it 20 minutes for dinner. <laughs> but uh, too bad we don't have uh, Conductor Fuller here to uh, give us a nice little tour of the depot. There's not a whole lot going on in there, but everybody gets off. We go ahead and uh, push back to the runaround track, get our locomotive turned around on the turntable and put back on the other side. And then after that 20-minute stop... Uh, we are ready to go ahead and take the last group of people back to Brighton, where our train terminates for the evening. Well, it's finally time, so we're ready to make our departure here from Valley View. We're going to go ahead and give it our two whistles and make our way out. Like I said, I just love it. Here we are again. <laughs> While we're enjoying this uh, nice picturesque scene, I will say that JMRI, since you guys know that I use JMRI to route freight cars on this layout, JMRI does actually also allow you to create passenger trains and passenger cars. You can do passenger, combine, mail, baggage, RPO, all kinds of options. And of course, you can always add your own car types as well. But uh, with that in mind, you can actually completely program all of your passenger operations into JMR as well, if you would like to. I personally have not done it, but it is entirely possible and reasonably easy to do. I didn't show this scene last time, but this is the coal mine. We do have a video coming out here in a few weeks where I will show the local that goes from Brighton all the way down here to the coal mine. It's a pretty simple operation. You come down, throw some switches, swap some cars, and then uh, make your way back. Really not too much that goes on there. But uh, still a fun job to run. Pretty simple. And uh, that'll be coming up here. Eh. Probably two or three weeks from now. I got quite a few videos lined up I got to do first. Here we are coming back into Hartley. On the return trip to Brighton, we do also make station stops at every station along the way. This is not a through passenger train. It is a working passenger train. So we make sure to make stops at all of our stations. Think of it as a true 1920s commuter train. <laughs> Although to be fair, I don't think that the X-Class locomotive was available in the 20s. I think it came out in the 30s. Could be wrong. It's been a while since I looked. Anyways, if I'm wrong on that, don't mind me. Well, here we are checking out the uh, two interchange tracks with the UP. This is another nice picturesque area just with the field, the gentle rolling hills and the nice freight cars in the background. To the left over here, I have not featured yet, but that is a area that is run by the UP. It has a local that goes there. Lots of switching done over there. I will also eventually have a video coming out about that as well. One last thing I'll say before we uh, go ahead and get ready to sign off for today. As many of you guys know who have downloaded uh, my two free routes I have on the download station, this one and the North Texas Beltline. The beauty of trains is you can very easily make the operational scheme your own. So, you know, if you see kind of how I'm running the passenger train here and you think, oh, man, that's great. I want to copy it. Well, then you go right ahead. And if you look at it, and you're like, man, that's that's pretty lame. I think I could do a lot better. Well, you have the privilege and the, the opportunity to go ahead and do that as well. And I definitely encourage you guys to do that. I'd love to hear about. Uh, people's different experiments they do with the layout and things they try. I would encourage you to uh, take every opportunity to make it your own. Well, as we make our final pull here into Brighton, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in again to another video on DA Trains. I appreciate all the support, the encouragement, the uh, likes, shares, and the comments. So please make sure to leave those. Make sure to subscribe as well if you find interest in the content and know that I will continue to be pushing out more content on the uh, different routes I have as time goes on. So stay tuned. I do have some more passenger videos coming out. I will go ahead and make a separate one here for the mail train. And then I've been asked to do a video about uh, passenger operations on the Cox and Sub. So look forward to that too. That's going to be a lot of fun to me. All right, guys. Thanks again. I will catch you guys next time. <laughs>